Hello, Scotty here. Um, in the following video, I'm going to show you how I build my screen bottom floors for my hives. And I'll, This floor is set up to work with my brood boxes, which are 16 and 5 8. And I did have a couple guys uh, uh, inquire about that. It was causing a little confusion, I guess. Um, so I thought I would shoot new beginnings for uh, most of my videos to do with the hives and try and try and clear that up a little bit. If you're curious as to why I use 16 and 5 eighths and how I arrived at that number, if you go watch the video on building the brood box, I explain it in great length there. Now, like I say, I have been re-uploading several videos and most of them I'm including drawings at the end. Well, unfortunately for this one, I don't have drawings. Reason for that is I actually plan to change it. There's a couple things about it that I'm not real happy with and I think I can make it better. I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to do that this winter, but if I do, I will try to add drawings to that video. Um, if you do decide to build this, I'm sure I've got all the dimensions in the video, but you should probably me measure your own equipment and you may have to change it just slightly um, to, to make it work with your own equipment. So I think that's all I need to say. Like I said, this is a video I shot last year. It's a re-upload. Um, just want you to be aware that the, the 16 and 5 8s might not work with your equipment. So you'll have to sort that out. So thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. You have yourself a good day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Um, one thing I do on the plywood for the floors, our inner covers, any anything, there's a half, half inch groove here and the plywood has to go into the grooves. Anytime I've got a piece of plywood, I have a little hand planer and uh, I'm wrong hand here right now, I would be standing. I, I clean the edges off all the time. It makes it a whole lot easier to go in. So that's the plywood. The two side rails are actually cut, uh, they're 22, 22 and a half inches long, and then you have to do a 45 degree cut on the end, and it's 22 inches, 22 and a half inches here, and then wherever the 45 comes. Then on the bottom side, I create, this is a half inch here, uh, space on the very bottom, and then it's got a half inch, uh, I guess that's a dado cut? I'm not really a woodworker, sorry guys. And I cut it three eighths of an inch deep. Uh, I used to come all the way through, which actually made it very easy to make these. I, I would make that dado cut on long lengths. But then when, when you go to put uh, the landing board on, I wanted to put a screw here and a screw here. And I was actually, see in this one, you can see the groove. And every time the stupid screw ended up there and I, I didn't like that. So on this batch, it's a little bit trickier to, to, uh, to mill this, but I didn't run all the way through. So you have to make a left and a right, and you will mess up a couple. But, so there, I end up with a left and a right. Then there's a piece that goes across the back of the plywood, and it's three and uh, one eighth tall by 18 and a half long. Again, half inch uh, space, and then a half inch dado cut that's three eighths of an inch deep. And that's, that's gonna go across there. Then, <laughs> then there's a piece that's four inch by 20. It's gonna go here. Then I got a couple pieces. Well, you know what, let's, let's just start assembling this so it doesn't get, so I don't get confused because I'm easily confused. Okay, so all I do is I would check my milling work, make sure that there's no shavings and sawdust in there. Got my Type Bond 3, my favorite glue in the whole wide world. Um, I don't lay too, too much. If I can get the package open here, there we are. Um, you want a fair bit, but not, not too much. You'll learn if you're putting too much in there, it's not very long and your work surface is all covered with glue. I do have a rag here handy. So we take the 15 and 7 8 side. Doesn't really matter which one of these that you start with, but, uh, and you want to, you want to line the plywood up with the back. You'll see that in a second. So that just, if, if you didn't take the planer and clean them corners off, sometimes that's a little bit, that's a little bit tricky. But uh, that lines up. Sometimes you little tap with a hammer. Then I take the, uh, the 3 and one eighth piece by the 18 and a half inch piece. And uh, I line that up and slide that on. Okay. Then I take the, the mating piece. And of course you've got to make sure that your, your 45 degree slopes are going the right way. And put that on there. This one I've already had it together dry fit once. So it's a little bit loose. Then my trusty... The glue is going to do most of the work, but I like throwing an air nail in just to kind of keep it. So I, I get this back surface lined up. I'm not worrying about the, the other end right now. I make sure that that's lined up nice, nice. The idea with this is, is you can't be tilted one way. You've got to get it straight or else the, I think I have like an inch and a half uh, brad nails in here right now. So you line that up. Okay, so I'll throw one in there. Now everything's easily to fall apart right now. So I hold it together and I very carefully turn it over. I line that up and if not, I'll tap it with a hammer a little bit. Then I throw a nail in here. Okay, then I stand it on end and I'm squeezing that in. And then grab my hammer. I'll just make sure that this uh, here piece is, is down tight. And then what I'll do here is I'll, I'll put my fingers trying to show this to you. I'll put my fingers either side of this and make sure that that's lined and then I'll, I'll push this piece in. Now this you got to be a little careful. Sometimes when you put these air nails in they'll want to come out. Bad spot to have your hand so typically what I do is I kind of get this lined up and then I'll just kind of hold that. This, this piece here wants to rock a little bit right now until so we want to try and get it level and square and I'm going to put the nail I'm going to put the nail on this side first, and just as I go to nail, I'm going to get my fingers out of there, okay? So I look around the other side. I want to get the nail in the center of that board, okay? So if you're not trying to fill them, it's a whole lot easier. So I'll get that lined up. I get, I'm looking here. I'm making sure that this is square. Then I look around the other side, and I get that lined up. 
And then like I say, I pull my fingers back and I got my fingers back out of the way of that one. Then I'll spin it around. Same thing. This, there's a little wee bit of a movement here. So I'm trying to get this so that, so that this surface is, is nice and smooth. And that's, it's not hard to do, but you just got to make sure that uh, when you go to put the air nail in there, that you get your hand out of the way. And for some reason, the other side isn't, isn't as tight as I'd like, so I'm going to put another one there. All right, that is actually the hardest part. Once you get those lined up, now there's only a couple little air nails in there. You start getting too rough with this, it's, it's going to come apart on you. So you want to be, just treat it, you know, careful. Now the next piece to go on is the 4 by 20 piece. And it's going to line right up with the top here. I got a little wee bit of a little wee bit of a burr there. That's good. Okay, so that's going to line up there and there. What I do now is I'll lay a bead of glue just in these first three or four inches. Then I'll, I'll lay a bead of glue across this here piece and here. All right. So I've glued it. I've glued it here. Now I'll just carefully put this piece on. And like I said, I'm not worried about where it is back there. I'm just trying to line up so that the, the very, very front edge of this board is lined up with the top of that. And of course, this way as well. Then I'll just kind of gently hold it. Again, because of the glue, the thing wants to slide around. So you do have to be, you have to do, be a little bit careful here. And I'm going to throw a couple nails on this side. And I'll usually put in one and then I check because it'll want to walk a little wee bit. So you just kind of check. Maybe I'll even put one there. Once you have two, it's not going to go anywhere. One there, one over here. Now this board here, I'll try and put two or three. And you're, you're just, you learn how to do it. But you're trying to get the nail into the center of that. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to put on is, is the landing board. Now this piece is 20 inches long by six inches. And then I created two 45s. Usually what I do is I get to this point I'll take a couple of scraps and, and you've got to adjust the, your saw, you know, you adjust the fence, you got the blade on a 45. Sometimes you've got to fine tune that a little bit so that it's going to sit on, now it's going to stick up, hopefully the camera will see that, it sticks up above. But I want it to sit level on the table, I want it to be tight here and, and reasonably tight to that and then we'll take the planer and we'll clean that off. Uh, yeah, I just look at that, make sure it's all good and it is. So then what I do, you know, like I say, if you had to the first time I did it, I adjust the saw two or three times till I got the pieces the way I want them. But that's basically what you're after. Then again, we take some glue. Glue is what holds it. Well, I'm going to put some screws in this one as well. Across there and then up this, this side too. So those, those three surfaces are got a reasonable bead of glue. I set it back down on my work table. I'm using my fingers on both sides to, to line that piece up back and forth. And then usually I can just, I just pull it pull it up in there and the 245s usually close. I'll hold that very carefully and then I just put one nail on each side for now. And again, you're trying to get in there and then lots of times I'll put a couple here on the top. Now, here on the top you've got to bring the gun down so that you get in this, the, the nail into that. What I do next, these are the next pieces, I have a couple blocks of wood there that are just uh, clamp to the table. I think I threw an air nail in there. That, that just gives me something to work up against. I can push against that. Now I take, I have a number six Robinson bit and some number six by two inch Robinson screws. And I'm going to put four screws in. The, I like to try and put the bottom one in first because that, in case there is a little bit of a gap there, it'll pull it in. And you can see, I don't, the camera won't pick it up, but the glue oozed out there. It pulled it in nice and tight. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just get it started slow. And then you can put the top two. Now the top two, you don't have to worry about the angle because there's lots of, lots of wood behind there. Same thing on the other side. And then I'll still use that little stopper. I'll throw the, uh, I'll turn it sideways. And I'll grab my little hand planer and that top edge. I don't, again, I don't know if the camera will pick that up or not. Hopefully it does. It just sticks up there. Oh, it's not quite half inch. Only takes a second. Just take this little hand planer. And there you are. Whenever you're using your planer, don't set it down on the blade. Always set it on the edge. It damages the blade. My 
My woodworking high school teacher would be proud to know I remembered him telling me that. All right, so next what we want to put on are some of these smaller pieces. And there is quite a few of them. The two we're looking for right now are the 20, 20 inch, these are three quarter inch by three quarter inch because our wood is three quarter inch. So we've got two 14 and a halves and a 20. Um, the 20 is going to sit across here, and what we're doing now is we're creating a, a surface to put the, um, put the wire mesh on, and then I have a few more pieces here, an 18 and a half, and two that are 16 and 5 eighths, and the, the door, and that'll actually go on after the wire, and it, you know, permanently attaches the wire. But these three pieces we put on, it's not hard to do. All we do is lay a bead of glue on here, and make sure you get glue right to the back, because that piece it only has a small area to to sit on. So we put that on and then I put the 14 and a half on this side and I put a 14 and a half on this side and then this 20 inch piece goes across the back and just tighten everything up. And again, trust me, Aaron Ehler, I take my, my thumb and my forefinger to make sure that this piece is on top of my, uh, my board underneath and then just I drop one nail that in and I'll do the same thing back here because it wants to move on the glue and I throw one in there, and then I do the same thing on this side. And then I make sure that the 20 inch piece is pushed this way and forward tight. But now I'm a little bit careful here. I don't put the air nail right in the center because after I put the wire on and I put the, the other two pieces on there, I'm gonna drill a hole down there and I'll put one screw through the hole works. So when I put this air nail in, I put it near the front and I kind of put it in on a little bit of an angle just to keep it out of my way. One more piece that I put on right now is this piece. This is uh, 18 and a half by half inch thick because, because we left a half inch space here, but, uh, you know, when we made that, uh, that groove for the plywood. And uh, the width isn't important. Again, I just use scraps and I run it through the thickness planer to make it half inch. The length is the only one that's important because it's got to fit between there. And the only reason for this piece is just to stiffen up that plywood. Even when the plywood's painted, this is sitting on the ground or pallet or wherever you have it. That plywood will have a tendency to want to, wanna, um, to warp. So on this particular one, I do get pretty generous with the glue. I put a nice, nice squirrely bead there. And then uh, I'll stick that on, and I just try and line it up at the back. Like I say, the, 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 the width of that board's not important. I'll just put that on there. I use an air stapler. I have one inch staples in here. So you got a half inch piece of wood and a half inch piece of plywood. It, apparently I'm out of view of the camera, back in here. Um, the one inch staple, if you go straight, they want to jump right through there. So I just put them in on a little wee bit of an angle. And again, these staples, they're only there just to hold it until the glue dries. And I'll put a, I'll put a few on that side as well. So that, I think that's going to do it for the moment. I'm going to take these outside and paint them. And then uh, when the paint's dry, we'll, another day we'll put the wire and the rest of the pieces on. So stick around. All right, so I got these outside the other day and I got the inside painted. So today we can finally finish assembling these. And the main thing here is we've got to get the, the screen on. Um, now my rolls are four feet, so I cut it. Uh, the screen is cut 19 and a half by 16 because the roll is four feet. If I cut it 19 and a half, I actually get three pieces that just work out perfectly. Um, all I do here is I kind of try and center it back and forth and I look how much coverage I have here and I try and get a similar amount there. I'm not too worried about the front. So I just kind of line that all up. Now the only thing I try to do, uh, our entrance is going to be here and the bees are coming across this wire. So at this very front point, I try to get it stapled down and I start there and I work my way out because quite often you get puckers. So I really try to get the front stapled down and I do kind of keep an eye on the rest of it. And then there's going to be some wood that goes on here so I don't worry too much. Just put a just put a, a few, again, like I said, well, this one here actually does have a few good puckers. You just try and get it the best you can. And then uh, we've got three pieces. The two side pieces are 16 and 5 eighths, and of course that's the width of our brood box, so that, that's why that's that. And then between them I have a piece that's 18 and a half inches. 
So all I do here is I do lay uh, uh, a reasonable bead of glue along here because it is going to be squishing down on top of that stream and across the back and up the side. And then of course I need my trusty little air nailer. Now I'm not sure if the camera will see this or not. This back piece comes out and sits on top of this board and this piece butts up to it. So this piece is actually going to overlap that and then I'm going to put a screw in there. That makes this back, uh, this back corner reasonably uh, strong. So I just use my fingers and I, I try and line that edge up as best I can and I try and line this back up. And then once I have it where I think I want it, I just throw a couple air, air nails in there. The glue is going to do most of it, but I will throw a few in there. Then the 18 and a half one, I, I butt up to this one. And again, I try and line it up on the back. Takes a minute maybe and squish that screen down. Um, sometimes you might have to clamp it, but very rarely. Then I, I throw a couple air nails in here. One in each end first. And usually one in the center. I'm happy with that. Then I take the other 16 5 8 piece and I'm now I'm, I'm going to butt up to this one. Like I say, this is what the, the brood box is actually going to sit on. And then I throw a couple nails here. Or a few. Then what I do is I want to put some number six screws down through these corners so I have a uh, three thirty seconds inch drill bit because you need a drill bit that's a little bit smaller than the screw and because these pieces are only three quarter by three quarter if you don't drill a pilot hole you can almost be certain that it's going to split it on you. Yeah, so I've got my number six by two and I got number one the green Robinson driver. It really squishes that down good. Then I spin around. I have a little block of wood that's actually air nailed down there so that I've got something to push against. Uh, my entrance, I run a, it's about four and a half inches. I've made them a little smaller. I was running them three eighths, but I did still see the odd small mouse get in there. So this year, or this batch, I've actually dropped that down to about five sixteenths. Now you can just screw it to these front box. Like I say, then our box is going to sit here if you wanted to have a full entrance, but I don't. So I'm actually going to glue it and screw it. I just take a pencil and I run a line across the front. And of course it goes in where the door is and I do the same thing on the back. So now I can see where it's going to sit quite easily and I'll take and I'll, I'll lay a, a little bit of glue there, but of course not where the door is going to be. And then I usually put a little glue on the ends of these. Now before I put this on, I know where it's going to sit, so I, uh, just in this bottom corner, about a, about a quarter inch down, a quarter inch over, and that's going to get me pretty much in the center, maybe it's three eighths, in the center of that little block. I just put a little hole there, just again, just so that the screw doesn't split it. Then I just sit it down and push it back in, and then uh, again, a couple two inch number six screws. Like I say, that little block just gives you helps a little bit. Should have a longer bit. It's on my shopping list. But anyway, not too bad. Okay, so now the doors is uh, attached. All we have to do now is the sticky board in the rear entrance. So let's do that next. All right, so to make the, the rear entrance or the vent I guess really is what it is and the sticky boards one piece um, this you can you can put a grid on here to, and then some Crisco grease to track your mites and uh, my original ones I didn't have this entrance uh, I just had the sticky boards in there but I was having some issues with bees getting in there I wanted the ventilation and it, it allows me to put the Varroa uh, treatment tool in there the heating tool but I've decided to make this little door and it still has some screen on it and uh, stops the bugs from getting in and uh, yeah. And I didn't want to put a handle on it. If I put a handle on it, then when I wrap it with my tar paper in the fall, the handle's a problem. So that's why I just made this the way I did. And all it is, it's a piece, it's 18 and a quarter long, inch and three quarter high. I took a, about a one inch hole saw and I drilled two holes and then I managed to put this on the router table and, and route this out. And then the back, just a piece of that number eight hardware cloth that covered it. It's about 16. This one's 16 by about an inch and a quarter, I guess. And uh, yeah, it, that uh, that works out just fine. So then all I do, this plastic's just signage I get from a confectionery store. So it's easy if you have a second one, put that there. Then 
I just line this up on here. Not really difficult. And I switch to some half inch staples and I'll put four or five in here, I guess. And there you have the rear entrance ventilation door, I guess. So I think, I think that's going to wrap it up this floor. There, I do realize there's an awful lot of pieces, but it is a really good floor. And, and to be honest with you, the bulk of it is just scraps. I had to buy the sheet of plywood and the, uh, the landing board was out of a good piece of wood, but everything else is just scraps that I'm cleaning up. So, you know, uh, good winter projects, lots of fun. Make some sawdust, make some good floors. As always, you be good to your bees, and I'm sure they'll be good to you. See you next time.